Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. It's good to be with you today. I hope you're having a good week. Here we are, the last day of the third week of Advent, the third week before Christmas. And today I'd like to share another message with you. This time it comes from Luke chapter 1, verse 38. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Mary has encountered the angel Gabriel, who has told her that she's going to bear a child, and the child will be the savior of the world. Now, as I mentioned before, I, I don't know how, how I would react to that kind of a news moment. I mean, that's kind of a strange sound and sentence and promise. And the whole thing sounds kind of weird. But yet, it was in fact true. And Mary responds to the angel with those, the words I've recorded here. Here I am. Let it be with me according to your word. Now Mary has to understand at this point in time that nobody's going to believe her. Well, practically nobody. Hopefully Joseph will, <laughs> since he's the prospective husband. Can you imagine being entrusted with such a powerful word that you can't share it? Because nobody would believe you. Here we have this, this young teenage girl looking forward to life, maybe like you and me, looking forward to the promises of what's to come, even if you're old like me. <laughs> You can still look forward to what God's going to do in the days ahead. I mean, as long as you're alive, as they say, you ain't dead yet. <laughs> so God will still be doing things in your midst. But in this particular case, Mary is in a real predicament, a conundrum, as they say. She can't go around and brag about what God's doing. Because who would believe her? But at the same time, at least within a few months, everybody's going to know that something has happened. And who do you think they're going to point the finger at? They're going to suggest that Mary and Joseph have been doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. And she has to live with the tension of carrying this baby, knowing the circumstances of its conception and the meaning of the child, and she has to live with it alone. Now, maybe you're a lonely or a lone person. I would say lonely. Maybe you're the kind of person that just doesn't like having people around. And there are some who are like that. There really aren't that many, but there are some. And maybe not talking to people, not sharing things, even with a, a, a special someone like a spouse, maybe that's okay with you. We don't know whether it was okay with Mary or not. All we know is that she had to do it. And she had to do this for nine months this is not something she's going to wake up the next day and it'd be gone. And over that time, I'm sure she did a lot of talking to God. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a passage I'd like to share from Psalm 62, 5. And it says this, For God alone my soul waits in silence. My hope is from him. And then Psalm 62, 2. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. 
Both of these verses from Psalm 62 remind us of how powerful God is. And when we feel like there's nobody that's going to believe us and there's nobody to listen to, there's still someone who wants to listen. And that someone is God. So here we are at Christmas time. Maybe you're caught up in the festivities. Maybe, like me, you've been playing Christmas songs a little longer than since Thanksgiving. Maybe you just enjoy the lights and the beauty of the moment. Faith and I have been watching some of the old classical Christmas movies. And some new ones along with it. Something disturbs me about the way people have tried to live and describe the meaning of Christmas over the ages. But yet, this moment, this time, this woman is alone. And so I, I wonder about your situation. Are you alone? Oh, do you know someone who is alone? You think it might be helpful if you went over to them and visited them, took them some cookies. Well, maybe they can't eat cookies. Take them some McDonald's Big Macs, if that works. I, I don't care. But do you think there's someone that could use a visit from you this Christmas. And in the process, you'd get a visit from them. See, Christmas is all about giving and receiving. The giving of God's love and the receiving of the Savior of the world into our lives. And I hope that's what defines your Christmas. You got a weekend now before Christmas. I mean, you know, folks, time is of the essence here. You got to get yourself in gear if you're not already are. And you got to you got to savor the moment of the day that God came to earth to show his love for you and for me. Well, thanks so much for listening. Hope you have a really great weekend. I really do. If you have a need or a concern that we can help with, please let us know. And we'll do everything we can, as fast as we can, to help meet your need. Thanks so much for listening. God bless you. I'll talk to you next week.